Uh, but moving on to that playoff game, like I said, you were starting for an injured Tim Couch, and you wound up having another monster game. Or not another, but you ended up having a monster game, throwing for 429 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, you guys couldn't be stopped in the air. Like, so I consider myself a pretty big football fan, but I don't understand, like, the X's and O's that well. So can you, like, break it down in football terms? Like, what opened up that day? Like, what were you guys – like, what happened? Yeah, I mean, we, just, we just did uh, – we kind of did – you know, the, when you play the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens, they play an odd front. So that means the nose is covered, you know, some way. But it, it's covered with the nose guard. So when 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 they get in those situations, when Dick LeBeau, he was the defense coordinator, he's kind of the inventor of the, the zone blitz. So when you get them in 3-4 stuff, you know, they can move the Mike backer and the, and the Mo backer, which we used to call it. I call it the Jack now. But the Mike and the Mo, they, they can move those guys around. So. You know, they can, they can give you so many different looks. So we just decided that week, I remember Bruce saying, you know, we're just going to keep them out of that. We're going to – because when you go to, go to a a regular offense, which is a two-back tight end, two wide receivers, they're going to go to a three-down, three-four look. But if you got into back a tight end, three wide receivers, then they would go to their nickel defense and they would get in an even front. So an even front – I've, and even front to me is so much because you don't have to – there's something on odd fronts that you have to do where you have to dual read by your guards. You have to figure out some way that you're going to have to protect the outside. You know, some people fan out. Some people dual read. So dual read means he reads the backer to the Sam backer or the backside guard reads the mo to the wheel. You know, he'll pop out and then the, the tackle stay man on. So when you go into a four down – look then the, the offensive line has the four down guys and then we'll pick a mic out so that's the five guys so we'll declare that and then you know who whichever they declare then the back if it depends on the protection if the back you know if we had a scat protection scat right means he goes left so we have the wheel picked up and then we would be hot off the sam so that's kind of getting a little bit that's what you wanted but that's kind of getting a little bit too detailed but that's kind of the game plan we went into we just said hey we're going to stay in kings we're going to keep them in an even front and then we're just going to see what happens from there you know because we we thought that we felt like we could we could throw the football on them running the ball on the pittsburgh state was not very good because they you know year in year out they got the number one number two rushing defense in the league them in baltimore when ray lewis and ed reed and all those guys are there they really could stop the run so we wanted to get them simple and keep them in an even front so we could know where they were. And then I, I just watched so much film that week that, you know, I told one of my my guys that I know, Kevin Elko, he's a sports psychologist, but I told him, you know, and I'd already played that game in my head the week before because I, I'd watched so much film and I kind of knew what they were going to do. And, you know, and it kind of turned out that way. You know, I knew when they were rolling safeties, I knew, you know, who was going to stay off and I knew, you know, when to get rid of the ball. I knew where our matchups were. So it, it you know, it kind of, you know, that's what preparation does for you. And, uh, you know, that was kind of the game plan that we had. And, you know, for the last quarter, I mean, we were, you know, there's no, I think we were up 33 to 13 in that game. And I think they scored right before the third quarter ended, which made it 33 to 20. But still with 33 to 20 in that game going in, you know, in the end, end of the fourth quarter, I just, the way we were playing, we should not have lost that football game. And, you know, for whatever reason we did, we started going into that prevent mode, which I can't, I'm just, I'm not a defensive coach, but I know what bothers quarterbacks. And I know what, you know, we had been hitting Tommy Maddox all day, Foge Fazio, who, you know, Lord rest his soul. He had been bringing guys all day. And, you know, we, we had got them out of their offense. We had stayed on the field as an offense. and We were able to do what we wanted to against those guys. And, you know, then, you know, when you get up on, a, on an opponent, you know, people want to play this prevent stuff and say, hey, you know, instead of keep doing what you're doing and with the pedal to the metal. And, you know, that was a, that was a coaching decision that I, I wish we could go back and, you know, not do. But, hey, it turned out that way. Right. So I was going to talk about you guys led for majority of the game. And I have the numbers right here. The Browns led 24 to 7 and also 33 to 21. Um, okay, 21. There you go. But you guys would lose at the very end after Pittsburgh rallied, and Pittsburgh won 33-36, to 36, and you explained what you think happened. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot here, and I understand if you don't want to answer this. But uh, Bruce Arians has gone on record saying, Mitch Davis is the reason you guys lost. Do you agree with that? 
Well, I mean, you know, hey, as a head coach, you got a lot of responsibilities, man. And, and um, you know, he, he's the one that – in the final decision, he's the one that makes those calls, you know. I, I just know that we stopped doing what we were doing. And, you know, it, it's all – it's like, you know, here's the deal. And and I just I just re – I just got reconnected with Dennis Northcutt, you know, about two weeks ago. You know, he's living in L.A. and – you know, I've got I've got a thread with Andre Davis, Andre Davis, Kevin Bentley, uh, Kevin Johnson, Andre King, all those guys. And then, you know, I asked somebody if they had Northcutt's number because I saw Northcutt on on the Vice Channel not too long ago, and he was talking about uh, that it was it was a deal about Cleveland, and then he was talking about uh, they had him on there for something else. So I called him and I texted him, didn't call him, but I texted him, and you know, we ca- kind of caught up with each other. But he said. You know, man, he's like me and you are like eternally connected, man, with the way that we played each other, and then eternally connected with the uh, with the Pittsburgh game. And everybody says, well, you know, they always ask me about the play that Northcutt dropped the pass, and and if Dennis catches that ball, the game's over with. I mean, that's reality. That's the honest truth. But here's what I tell people: if Dennis doesn't make a couple of those punt returns, and then he caught two touchdown passes himself that day. You know, we're not in that situation at the end of the game. You know, now, if we could go back and do it all over again, it wouldn't have mattered if they got in that prevent defense, you know, if Dennis catch. But here's the deal. That's football. That's life. I mean, that's, you know, hey, I hate that. And I'm sure that Dennis feels really bad, but I don't. I mean, Dennis was the reason that we were in that position because he made a lot of plays that day. And he was, you know, he, he was one of those guys that was all over the place. He was making plays for us. He caught a couple of touchdown passes for me. You know, he kept driving live. He had a big punt return at one time. So he was the reason that we were in that position. And, you know, unfortunately, if he does make that catch, the game's over anyway. But, you know, that that's – I mean, you know, if – my college coach said this, man. He, when, when we – when we met as a senior group our last day, he said, when you listen to Garth Brooks and you listen standing in, inside the fire, that was one of his songs. Nobody listens. I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people don't know who Garth Brooks is. But, you know, that's that's the deal. Like, we are standing inside of the fire, man. And, and you can – people criticize football players, tennis players, baseball players, basketball, but you're not in the fire. You know, you can criticize from the stands. You can do all that you want to. But, like, you don't know what we go through. We're still human beings. and you know, unfortunately, Dennis missed that ball. Okay. I mean, that, whatever. I mean, it's it's one of those deals where we played great that day, and in the end, we came up short. That was the deal. Because there's other plays in that game that we could have probably made. I could, you know, I, if I wouldn't have thrown that one interception, I forget, I think it was Mike Logan who picked me off. He kind of, he kind of fooled me. But if I don't throw that interception, who knows? We might go down and score again. So, you know, it's just things like that happen, and, and guys are willing to, put their names on the line each week and get ridiculed by people on ESPN, on Sports Center, on, you know, in the paper. But nobody's really standing in the fire but us, and they don't really know, understand that, hey, that's part of playing the game. And sometimes you win them, and sometimes you lose them. And sometimes you have bad things happen. Sometimes you have great things happen, but you you can't be an up-and-down roller coaster. That's just the price of playing the game. Right. So had you guys won that game, how far do you think you could have gotten the playoffs? Because I always point out there was no dynasty that year because the Patriots had not yet become a dynasty. In right. fact, they didn't, they didn't even make the playoffs that year. And there was no like really dominant team from what I understand. So like how far do you think you could have gone? Well, I think we were supposed to go play the Oakland Raiders. We were the one who played the Next weekend. And, you know, here's the deal about the playoffs. You never know. I mean, I thought, I think we had to pass Pittsburgh and if we could have gone to Oakland, all you asked was, and we were actually, we were actually, you know, since I got to, you know, practice that week, I think we were starting to hit like a gear, like, you know, starting to come around. And all you can ask for is to get hot during the playoffs. I mean, I used Ben Roethlisberger when he won his first Super Bowl and, and, and uh, against the thing with Seattle when he was in Detroit, when it was in Detroit. I mean, I think they ended the season at nine and seven, just like we did. But they he got on they got on a hot streak there at the end. He won a Super Bowl. Right. You know, all you can ask for is a chance. And I, I really felt like, you know, with me getting in there and with having that week of practice and then, you know, getting with those receivers, I, I think we 
we're kind of hitting a streak right there where I think that we might have could have done some damage. You don't know, but all you ask for is a chance, and you ask you look for matchups. If we could have gotten by Pittsburgh and gone on to Oakland, I mean, that could have changed, uh, you know, that could have changed lives. I mean, you, you just don't know what's going to happen, and that's all you ask for is a chance to go play another down and another game, and who knows what would have happened. But you're right about the, the New England dynasty. They had not, I think it was the year after that, that they started or, I don't even remember. I mean, years, years start coming together in your brain. But, like, you're right. You never know what's going to happen, and we just needed a chance. And, unfortunately, we weren't able to go on. Right. And uh, it, it's kind of realistic you guys could have made a run because had you beat Oakland, you would have played Tennessee, and you guys beat Tennessee that year. So it's, it's it was not that unrealistic. Yeah, that, that was because we came back kind of on Tennessee. Like, you know, it wasn't as bad as the Chicago Bears deal, but we came back and right. uh, Tim, Tim played really well there in the fourth quarter. And we, we, I think we scored two touchdowns to go ahead of them. So, you know, that was kind of a deal right there where we were down in that game at Tennessee. And I can remember being, you know, because I'm from here. And that was one of the coldest dead game days, man, because they didn't, you know, it was, it wasn't that cold, but like we didn't bring any, you know, big gear because it wasn't supposed to be but when the sun went down man it got really cold but Tim played really well that day Dennis played really well that day he made a he made some huge plays too so you know we were able to you know weather the storm and come back on the Titans that day so yeah yeah you're right I mean there was no real you know team that was there that you knew hey we gotta beat them we just you know just needed a chance 